Welcome to another episode of The Brand Called You, a podcast and podcast show that brings you leadership lessons, knowledge, experience, and wisdom from thousands of successful individuals from around the world. I'm your host, Ashutosh Garg, and today I'm delighted to welcome an award-winning award filmmaker from Australia, Ilsa Fay. Ilsa, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. It's so beautiful to be here. Thanks, Thank Ash. You. Uh, Ilsa is the founder of the Erotica Film Festival and the Eros Embodiment Festival. And as I mentioned, she is an award-winning filmmaker and she is a women's coach. So Ilsa, let's talk about the Erotica Film Festival. Tell me about what you do here and what was your motivation to start this? Oh, thank you. Yeah, so Erotica Film Festival um, is happening June 10 to 20 um, this year. And it's a festival that really speaks to consensual and authentic expressions of love, sex and intimacy. Mm -hmm. We do have some explicit films, but the, the primary foundation of the film festival is the desire to see more authentic ways that people interact, loving expressions, fun expressions, where vulnerability is honoured, mm. um, where, you know, the full spectrum of human emotion is shown through films that people can access. Okay. And... Um... Who, who is your audience? Our, so our audience is um, obviously over 18 uh -huh. um, and we have a really strong, we're based in Australia, so we have a really strong Australian audience, but we also have quite a strong US and European audience. Mm -hmm. Usually the people that come to find us are people who have gone on a spiritual journey and mm -hmm. in their spiritual journey have started to realise that their relationship to their sexuality is not as healthy or as fully expressed as they desire it to be. Mm. They might start to realise that they've had sexual re repression or they've been shamed or they feel embarrassed about mm. their body or their genitals or the people that they love. Mm. And so they've, they've gone on that journey of spirituality and then they've gone on the journey of integrating their sexuality and then they start to seek like-minded people as well as expressions that really are in line with their value system around integrity and authenticity and vulnerability. So that's primarily who ends up coming to find us. Wonderful. And, you know, the word erotic, somehow the other seems to have a very different connotation in the minds of the average human being. How do you look at it uh, from the perspective of your film festival? Look, it, it is a, a, a taboo word. It is triggering. It does activate people. And I think, you know, for me personally, that's one of the pleasures of it. Okay. You know, we live in a world that is very, well, we try to make it really safe for everyone. And safety is really good. But sometimes we need to just be triggered and, and activated a little bit so that we can open up to new ideas, new concepts, and, and ultimately new parts of ourselves. Mm -hmm. So the word erotic... Um, it stems from actually eros, and eros um, is both the primordial life force chaos energy, and it is also a Greek god of like sex and, and love and intimacy. Mm -hmm. And so it's really through that gaze more so than the explicit um, sex acts. We're really looking at eroticism as a sensuality-based word, as a way of connection. Correct. Yes, and from... From India, I mean, you know, eroticism is also uh, linked to the Kama Sutra and uh, the, the temples of Kajuraho, which have an incredible amount of artwork uh, on erotic mm. sculptures, uh, on temples, you know. So, but moving on, you state, uh, Ilsa, that born in the potent lands of Byron Bay, she has been drawn towards exploring magic, sexuality and consciousness since she was a child. Help me understand uh, the environment you are speaking about and give me some example. Yeah, sure. So actually my, my heritage on my father's side is Anglo-Indian. So I have, I have some threads of, of, um, of Indian heritage, but I was also born in Byron Bay. And Byron Bay is um, in Australia one of the, the first pioneering spiritual hubs of kind of Australian landscape mm -hmm. and inside Byron Bay when I was born there 35 years ago that's where the the yogis and um, the Hare Krishnas and these sorts of groups of people who are really deeply um, authentic in their spirituality started to really emerge from in, in Australian um, landscape and so I was born there and so I was born into a world that 
you know, meditation was totally normal and, and it's not always totally normal in Australia. Right. Where, um, where sexuality, where expression was really welcome. Mm. And I was also brought, you know, born into a home and into a household that really valued education, that really valued um, understanding different religions. So, you know, I, I was exposed to Buddhism. I was exposed to Christianity. I was exposed to a variety of different cultures, religions, different types of people. And, you know, I think that that's something that I've been able to bring through into erotica, mm -hmm. which is really where we're celebrating it and wanting to deeply honor all different types of people mm. and the different types of people that, you know, maybe aren't included this year. Like, if you know, if you come to the festival and you're like, hey, I don't see an expression of a, of a body that looks like mine, right. um, you know, then you get to make a film and say, Ilsa, you know, I want to make a film that really shows what my body looks like and who I love to connect with. Mm. And that actually happened to us last year and this year. We have this amazing film in a new category for differently abled, for disabled bodies, that because that's what happens. So we really love to, to include and welcome different genders, different identities, different mm -hmm. religions, races and, and creeds. Mm -hmm. Fascinating, fascinating. And, you know, uh, I know you've just spoken about this, but you also say that you work in the realms of sexuality and consciousness, mm -hmm. creating spaces that support vibrancy and empowered humanity. Um, help me understand this also. So during my journey, you know, I've, I've worked as I'm now directing a film festival. But before I got to being um, to being a filmmaker and um, a film director of the festival, I worked as a facilitator, as a teacher, and I still do work as a coach. And so primarily those spaces that I was operating in were holding women's circles, really supporting women to connect back to their hearts, to connect to their wombs, mm -hmm. to be able to open through magic and ritual and connection to self, as well as connection to other women mm -hmm. and connection to the land to start to open up their sense of empowerment, to step into like their full self-expression, to really claim their space, to feel confident, you know, to be able to access saying a full yes and to be able to access and say no and assert boundaries as they need to in their life. So mm -hmm. making containers or energy, uh, you know, groups and, and events that hold free expression that welcomes sexuality that welcomes in magic mm. um, and that welcomes in self-expression is something that has consistently been part of my professional life over the last five to ten years fascinating and is there a difference between the erotica film festival and the eros embodiment festival Yes, massive difference. So <laughs> the Eros Embodiment Festival is a biannual festival. So it happens every two years. Okay. And that is a festival where you come and you learn from teachers all over the world. So it's a really great place to start mm -hmm. um, introducing yourself to things like embodiment work, um, things like um, introductions to Tantra, um, introductions to breath work, introductions to self-care and self-pleasure. It's, it's an introductory space with some mm. deep dives, but it's a place to meet as a community and start to learn and dip your toe in the water. Mm. Um, what I've found with online festivals um, as they're growing now because, mm -hmm. you know, global events have got us all online. Yeah is that it's a, it's a really good place to find teachers that then you want to go deeper with. So instead of committing to a teacher for six months or a year or, or two years that you don't really know very well yet, this is a great place to come, meet, you know, 50 to 100 different teachers and then follow and connect with the teacher that really, really speaks to you, that you resonate with deeply. And, you know, you talk about meditation, tantra, yoga, breathing. A lot of these have their origins, in uh, in India, which yes. may maybe may have been your land of birth, or certainly where your parents came from, what is it that draws you to a, a lot of this uh, part of the, this kind of thinking, which people mm -hmm. say is uh, you know a little mystical, which is uh, unknown? And I'm from India, so I do believe in everything that you're doing. Mm. Look, I think you know. I think some people are naturally drawn to the mystic path mm. and some people are naturally drawn to the mysteries and, and there's no good reason why I've ended up where I've ended up. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I've, I've been a woman who has followed the things and I've always been deeply committed to following the things mm. that 
feel interesting or where there's mystery to unravel Mm. as opposed to being given the information that's, you know, very kind of black and white. Mm. But different types of people are really drawn to different things, you know, and for some people understanding that black and white information is deeply just for them and for other people following, you know, the, the, the women's mysteries, following the mysteries of sexuality, following the, I don't follow the, a tantric path, but following the tantric mysteries, you know, these are spaces and, and learnings and philosophies that guide your life. They're, they're a devotion to everything that your heart and your life wants to reveal to you. Mm-hmm. So I think for, you know, for me, my personal journey has just been a personal journey of wanting to know, of wanting to explore, of wanting to deepen through my heart and to bring greater levels of devotion into my life mm-hmm. and in that process, it's allowed me to, to speak passionately and to, to grow my own confidence, you know, in what are the things that I'm here to bring to the world. Mm, fascinating. You know, uh, again, when I was looking at uh, all the material you'd sent me and reading about you on the net, there's another comment which says that you are weaving sexuality, sensuality and sacredness through mm-hmm. film. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you go on to say we bring eros and art viewer and expression and the community together. Yeah. Um, help me understand this. <laughs> so I so I run the film festival, but I also make films. And so erotica began because um, I'm a I'm a mum and a few years ago my son was almost a teenager. He's a teenager now. And it got me thinking at the time because I was working in sexuality with women. I was like, oh my gosh, you know, my soon in a few years, my son is going to start to become interested in sex and sexuality and his first experience Mm. might be in the schoolyard looking at digital pornography and I felt really concerned as a parent about that Mm. I really was like that that is not what I think that children should be learning sex Mm. and intimacy from and a lot of adults and children use porn mm. as ways to educate themselves about how to have sex and how to do relationships. And for me, that was a really big problem. Yep. Um, not all porn is like that, but but a lot of it is. Um, a lot of it's very violent. A lot of it's very aggressive. And I felt that I had a responsibility to do something about that. Mm-hmm. And so that led me to wanting to make a film. Mm-hmm. I and and the the conditions that I put on that was. I want to make a non-explicit film, so no genitals. Mm -hmm. I want it to depict and showcase sensuality, intimacy and vulnerability within a group of people. And so I brought together um, my community. I had 10 to 12 people from my community come together and we made this film. And it's had, you know, maybe 13 or 14,000 hits on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And from that, that was how Erotica was born. It was like, okay, this is possible. It is possible to make films that showcase what it actually looks like when people connect Mm -hmm. and for it to be non-explicit. That is possible. Yeah, Yeah, absolutely. Right. And so I was like, okay. And then I got another hit. So I'm just like Mm -hmm. following my, my mysterious path and got another hit to create another film. And this film was made in Melbourne in one of the breaks between COVID when we could Mm -hmm. get together. Mm -hmm. And again, we brought together community. We had maybe 20 people come to this, to this filmmaking experience. Mm -hmm. It was non-scripted. It was non-explicit. Um, And again, it was this bringing together of community, of weaving together, you know, authenticity of people sharing their vulnerability and their Mm -hmm. stories, being able to connect authentically Mm -hmm. um, and to be in their full expression without it having to be about genitals or penetration, um, where everybody was in consent at all times. Mm -hmm. And that is the film that has won, I think, four or five awards now through international festivals. Amazing. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, Elsa, moving on, uh, I've often said that in a predominantly prudish world mm-hmm. where, mm-hmm. you know, the topics that you and I are speaking about are not normally discussed, how are you making a difference? Look, we, we make a difference every single day that we are operating erotica. You know, erotica is is really pioneering and and is leading the way around consensual um, expressions of intimacy, as well as, you know, we're we're providing a platform Mm. that so many of our community members, um, a lot of people that I've worked with, women and men who have been in my containers, Mm. and then people who have come to the festival from Mm. last year 
have reached out and said, we love this space. It just feels so safe. It feels so honoring of different people, of different expressions. We want to make a film for this festival. So most of the films that you will see in this year and every year, most of the films have been made specifically for our festival Mm -hmm. because our community trusts us. They know what our values are Mm -hmm. and the more that we share about it and that we talk about it, Mm -hmm. it creates, you know, deeper levels of permission and people are excited to come. And, you know, we, we really encourage people to do watch parties or to get your partner or your lover and sit and watch a few films together and, and open up a conversation. It doesn't have to just ignite, you know, sex between two people. A conversation is so Mm. valuable Mm. to start to open up, you know, what do I need? What do I want? What do you love? How can we respect each other? How can we bring, you know, greater pleasure and intimacy into our relationship? That's not just about sex. That's really important. So I feel like erotica is absolutely just changing, changing lives, (laughs) changing people's relationships. You know, one message I got last year was... (laughs) was, you know, I messaged saying it was a week had like the best sex of our whole relationship yeah. after watching a film. <laughs> so that feels really exciting. I know, fantastic. And uh, my next question to you will say that are you face, or have you faced any societal or cultural challenges um, when it comes to the Erotica Film Festival? Yeah, look, personally, personally, yes, I actually have, you know, I said I'm a mom and mm. Um, erotica has been a personal, um, a really big journey and a challenge for me because mm-hmm. not everybody in my family unit um, agrees with or understands or is interested in going on their own journey yeah. of sexuality. Yeah. And, and so because of that and the cultural gaze around erotic content being um, harmful, bad, inappropriate, mm-hmm there have been misconceptions about what it is that I actually do. And that's created some difficulties as a parent. Mm -hmm. So it's, for me, it's been really interesting to, to know that erotica started because I felt this responsibility as, as a parent, as an adult person in the community. And it's also been one of my, my biggest personal struggles in navigating um, other parents, family members, um, you know, and and other kind of systems and, and structures in the Australian landscape. Fascinating. Uh, I have time for three more questions. Uh, my uh-huh. next form question is, why is erotica still not getting the respect this art form deserves? That's a great question. You know, I, I, think, it's, I think it actually comes down to the personal relationship mm. to your own body and the personal relationship to your experience of sex and mm. sexuality. And that can come from, you know, what is the family that you were born into and what are their attitudes towards sex? Did you see your parents feeling comfortable and confident in their bodies or ashamed of their bodies and ashamed of their sexual desires? Did you see your parents, you know, in loving displays of affection or was it non-consensual and aggressive? What is the religion that you were born into? And There's so many different things that can influence and affect the way we see mm. eroticism and, and sexuality. And as a, as a global movement, it's, it's quite big because we've got, you know, the LGBTIQ community, we've got trans communities, we've got non-binary communities now. And this big movement towards inclusivity and diversity is a big support, but that's just kind of looking at gender and sexuality um, and identity and not so much at the personal relationship to intimacy. So I think that it's still emerging. You know, I mean, these changes happen slowly and each person, you know, is really responsible for that journey in in and of themselves. Mm -hmm. And then it it starts to shift and change more. So I think that's probably the key key part. Wonderful, wonderful. Um, My second last question to you is about Eros University. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about what you're doing here. So Eros University, this is a new space that we have created. So it's it's still um, a baby space. It's still mm-hmm. growing. Mm-hmm. Um, and inside this space, we have um, online courses. So they're self-paced. You can do live master classes. We also have a selection of some of the films from previous erotica mm-hmm. film festivals. Um, if you do want to watch the films from the erotica film festivals, you do have to actually come to the live events because we don't tend to hold them. Mm-hmm. So Eros University is a space where you can... Um, 
um, where you can learn, where you can experience art, where you can experience film, um, and you can start to connect with a community that's um, a community of students. Fascinating. And my last question to Wilsa, uh, and this is for the many, many people who will listen to our conversation. What would you say are three lessons uh, based on all your experience you would like our viewers and listeners to take away? Um, given the hypothesis that a majority of people don't seem to understand erotica as it should be. Mm -hmm. Ah, this is a great one. Um, I think the first thing would be to always trust your intuition. Yeah. To, you know, if your body is a no, if, if you just feel in your gut that you're a no to something, whether it's a person, a place, an experience, to always trust that, you know, your, your body always knows what's right for you. Right. Um, and in the same vein, to trust mm -hmm. your yes, even if it feels a little bit scary or mm -hmm. a little bit no, you know, a little bit new, yeah. you know, it's, it's to trust that yes and to trust that no, to always do that. So that would be probably my number one. Mm -hmm. My number two um, would be to always create space in your week yeah. to, to just connect with your own body. Yeah. No no screens, no music, yeah. no, no other technologies, no other people, you know, even 20 minutes yeah. you know, once a week to just place your hands like mm. on your heart or to, play, or to just hold your genitals and just mm. breathe. You don't have to stimulate and have to do anything exciting. It's just, just to hold them and breathe and spend time with that part of your body is um, unbelievably beneficial. Mm. So that would be number two. Mm. Um, and the last one, mm, the last one is to keep learning. Okay. To find teachers, to find mentors that you deeply, deeply resonate with. Mm. Um, don't, don't worry about what other people have to say. You will always end up with the right teacher. Um, and, and to keep exploring and being willing to open up through those limitations so that you can experience the fullness of life that you're here to experience. Fascinating. Ilsa, on that note, and your three amazing lessons of trust your intuition and your body, trust your yes, as you say, very, very, very correctly. Your second one was create space to connect with your body. And third one is keep learning. Thank you so much for speaking to me. Thank you for talking to me about the amazing work that you're doing in the world of erotica and actually uh, demystifies, demystifying the word erotic. And I've mm -hmm. learned many, many new things and new perspectives from you today. Thank you for uh, talking to me at length about all the amazing work that you're doing. And finally, thank you for speaking to me and good luck to you. Thank you so much, Ash. Thank you so much for having me. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the brand called You Videocast and Podcast, a platform that brings you knowledge, experience and wisdom of hundreds of successful individuals from around the world. Do visit our website www.tbcy.in to watch and listen to the stories of many more individuals. You can also follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. Just search for the brand called You.